Hi. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to our very first episode of what we are calling the SASOP show. Uh, my name is Brian Farrell. I'm an IT manager at Better Cloud. Uh, I've been here for a little under two years. Um, and prior to that, uh, I worked for a music school education franchise for a while. And a little bit before that, I worked for Apple. Um, so it's fixing your iPhones up at the Genius Bar. And um, a fun fact about me, so the, the, the music school I worked for was it's School of Rock. And um, I, a lot of people would ask me, you know, oh, haha, is Jack Black your boss? But actually, um, School of Rock is, precedes the movie. And so the movie is very loosely based on the founder of the company, School of Rock. Um, so yes, yes, he was. How fun. <laughs> and I'm joined by Justine. Hello, uh, I'm Justine Piankowski. I'm the director of SaaS Ops and corporate IT at Better Cloud. Before that, I was working at a media news and entertainment company called BuzzFeed for six and a half years. My fun fact is that I have over 100 houseplants in my apartment. And they look you great. You can see some of them, yeah. Thank you, they bring me joy in these difficult times. <laughs> um, I have killed over yeah. 100 houseplants probably. Oh, well, okay. Well, I can help you out with some, some tips on keeping plants alive. That could be a different episode though. Yeah, maybe we can, yeah, it can be a, a little segment at the end. Uh, welcome to the SASOP show. What these are meant to be are kind of short consumable videos where we'll discuss SaaS ops, all things IT, we'll do deep dives into our own environment, share our best practices, and interview our IT peers at other companies. We intended to do more formal videos, but with the global pandemic, uh, we're all working from home for the foreseeable future and are trying to do this via, via video conferencing instead. So apologies for any audio or visual issues. We're, we're doing our gosh darn best. <laughs> Um, today, we'll be talking about the new work from home landscape and the life and times of coronavirus, as well as how to enable gender pronouns in email signatures in G Suite. Yes, we will. Uh, yeah. So, remote work. Uh, how do you think it's going, Brian? I think we've well, been working from home for like two weeks now. Yeah. Um, besides the fact that I've lost track of what day it is, um, and I have no idea. Uh, it's been going great. I think, um, I mean, as, as good as it could be, um, I have this lovely Zoom background, as everybody has now discovered Zoom backgrounds are a thing. Um, oh, the shining. <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about that. That's good. Um, I'll, uh, next time you see me, there'll be two of me holding hands here. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, so beyond that, I think um, working from home has been you know, it's been obviously a challenge and I know it's a challenge for a lot of companies. Um, it's probably maybe a little bit less of a challenge for us than some. Thankfully, I mean, we're a cloud company. We literally make a cloud product, but um, also all of the tools that we buy uh, and use at Better Cloud are generally SaaS based, uh, SaaS tools. Um, and so even though we had to transition where we were all working from. I think pretty much everybody at our company is very used to collaborating with Google Docs, using Hangouts or Zoom to do video conferencing, um, and you know, using things like Salesforce and whatnot that they can do from home without really too much of a, a, an impediment. We don't have a lot of stuff that requires you to be physically on-prem to, to access it. And for you know, some of our engineering team, we have VPN things, um, but it's been, it's been all right. I mean, I think the biggest challenge or, you know, a challenge is, is a lot of the little details like figuring out, you know, where you work from home and how do you work if you have a family or other people or, or dogs or cats that are in that home with you and maybe also trying to work from home. I mean, my dog's been trying to work from home for, for a week now. Um, and you're just getting in the way, huh? I really am. Yeah. I'm interrupting a lot of her uh, squeaky toy time. Um, but, you know, those are the challenges, um, you know, things like 
where do you set up your desk uh, is me sitting on the couch with my computer uh, ergonomic. It's not. And, um, and, and then also things like uh, keeping connected with your team, um, making sure that you don't feel isolated, making sure that you have a proper balance of work and home time, uh, making sure that you're taking breaks. I think it's really easy for people to just like work, 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 really long hours and then you don't have to leave the office so you just keep working and suddenly it's 8 p.m or 9 p.m or something like that so um i think we're, we're kind of navigating those things and we've we have a lot of um, company-wide meetings now that are pretty quick um and everybody joins and it's great to see faces of people that i didn't really even know were in our company or had never met before but um you know, I've, I've, obviously it's not quite as easy for a lot of companies. Um, schools are really hit pretty hard with this stuff. Um, you know, regulated industries like banks, um, you know, how do you operate a bank if you're at home or how do you trade stocks or, you know, something like that. Um, so I think we have it probably a little easier than some. How do you think it's yeah. been going? No, I, I definitely agree. I think we're really lucky. And I, I honestly feel very thankful for all of our coworkers because everyone has been coming together and finding ways to connect during this time. Because frankly, a lot of us haven't worked from home for an extended period of time before. Our company has very in-office culture and people are used to just being in the office and being around people. So seeing people kind of organically come up with different things to, to do. Like this morning, I joined a remote meditation session that was run by one of our team members in Atlanta. Um, we've been doing, you know, happy hours over, over video conferencing. We've been doing games, all different departments are doing various different things to kind of connect and, and still get that face time in, even though we're all working remotely, which has been awesome to see. Yeah. You know, life finds a way in the words of Jeff Goldblum. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you know, all, all that being said, all of these challenges, that doesn't mean that work stops or that, that we can't uh, continue to be productive and find ways to continue to do our, our work, even though we're not in the office. Um, finding ways to make people feel comfortable and productive has been a challenge as well for, for our team and for our people and culture team. Part of that is finding a way to have an inclusive work environment, even though we're remote. Inclusivity is an important piece of building empathy and gender expression is part of that. So um, something we wanted to talk about, Brian will, will introduce now. Yeah, so uh, we wanted to, uh, what we wanted to share today was how we enabled our employee population to include preferred pronouns in their email signatures. Um, this sounds really simple, uh, but making sure that everybody, A, can put that in there um, in the email signature, and B, that we still maintain consistent signature policies um, is a little bit of a challenge. So we're just gonna kind of go over what we did to get that working. Um, at a high level, uh, we, we used Flash Panel, which is our own tool to manage email signatures. Um, you can basically create a signature policy that runs every night so that signatures stay the same or if they're changed they're refreshed every night um, and that policy is run based on google group membership so if somebody's in the signature i have my work number group um, every night that signature policy runs and redoes their signature so that functionality um, like i said it's in flash panel and it will be coming soon to our better cloud product the multi sas better cloud product so at a high level, here is what we did. So the way that our preferred pronouns system setup works is that employees first request to add preferred pronouns to their email signature. Uh, this is done through a regular help desk ticket. That request is reviewed and then approved, and that data, those preferred pronouns are added into Okta, uh, into a custom attribute field that we created. Now, we use Okta, but any identity provider like OneLogin or even G Suite directly would work to be able to do this. So Okta has a preferred pronoun field, and we then map that field onto the G Suite home instant messenger field. Like I said, 
we needed to use a field that we knew that Flash Panel and Better Cloud would be able to sync into our email signature, and Home Instant Messenger is one that works and wasn't currently being used. That preferred pronoun is then synced into Better Cloud into the corresponding Home IM field in Better Cloud. And then from there, our signature policy and signature template we've got the home IM uh, dynamic variable in our signature template and so when the signature is applied to each person at the company uh, if that home IM variable is filled it will insert those pronouns into the signature and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit more detail so here we are in Okta this is the profile editor for the built-in Okta attributes um, like I said, this could be any other identity provider. Most of them allow you to add custom attribute fields. So it doesn't come with a preferred pronoun field by default. So what we did was we added this preferred pronouns field down here. It's just a custom string field. So we called it preferred pronouns. Uh, it's a string. There's no limit here. Um, it can be read and written. Then in Okta, we also needed to make sure that uh, the attribute field for Home IM from G Suite was being synced into Okta. So the attribute field has to be there first for us to be able to create a mapping. So in this case, at the very bottom, you can say you can see that it's called uh, IM's Home IM, and the way that we added that was we clicked this Add Attribute button. And Okta pulls in a list of all of the attributes from G Suite. Uh, Okta does schema discovery, so this list is updated um, when you click this button here. So we added that home IMs field. Then we needed to map those two fields together. So in here, there's this is a G Suite user profile mapping. We have on the Okta to G Suite direction. And what we did down here was we just entered the field that we created, user.preferredpronouns, and we're mapping it to IM's home IM. And this is done for both create and update. So the field in an end user looks like this. This is their profile. And if we scroll all the way down to the very bottom, uh, we can see that the preferred pronouns are he, his, him. Uh, this is, like I said, just a text field, so you could really put anything in here. So um, it, for whatever preferred pronouns uh, your employees have or want to use, you can put that into there. And then in Better Cloud, Better Cloud has its signature policy tool, which is what basically takes a signature template and applies it to the users that it's applicable to automatically every night. And we created signature templates that contain the this dynamic field here, and I'll show you how that works. So you could create a new signature from scratch like this, and I'll show you what our existing signature templates look like. So we have um, several of them depending on what type of uh, phone number you wanted to list in your signature, and we'll just edit one of them here. And so you can see right here that we're putting in the home IM field. Um, you can see that field over here, oops, in contact, so I am, you can pick work I am, home I am, other I am, and it's right here. Now, um, as I mentioned, the, you know, the, the WYSIWYG editor in Better Cloud is good if you want to create some kind of basic signatures, but if you really want to get more control over it, you need to edit the source. In here, you can edit the source. I wanted to make sure that that field appeared exactly where I wanted it, and uh, it was italicized. So you can see here this, nope, not right there. Here we go. Do, do, do. This is the text right here. And so I also added a conditional statement in here. So Flash Panel supports basically checking whether or not a field actually contains data. So it's enclosed in the italics uh, HTML tag, and what it says here is uh, if it exists, so basically if the home IM field has data in it, put the data that's in the home IM field in there. Otherwise, put nothing, and it clears it. And the result is that we get a signature that looks like this.
Although in this case, the preview is showing that it's not italicized. Um, in my actual signature, it does show up as italicized. So this is um, why you really want to make sure that one, you're editing the source probably, and two, uh, you actually test it on a, on a user like yourself. And that's all there is. So what challenges did you run into while you were putting all of this together? Yeah, uh, so one of the challenges was just figuring out which kind of attribute we could use. Um, Flash panel has uh, a set number of attributes that it imports from Google. And so, you know, things like first name, last name, street address, those are obviously already taken, but it has a few other attributes, including home instant messenger. And since I don't think I have AIM anymore. You know, I think it shut down, right? Shut uh, down a few years ago, unfortunately. RIP. Yeah, I'm behind the times. Um, since, you know, people don't, I don't think anybody's putting their home instant messenger um, in their email signature, especially for work. So we actually use that. It's just a string of text. Um, so we we wanted to put that, we, we, we selected that to use for, putting in the pronouns. Um, this isn't the first time we've done something like this. We've also put uh, like things like links to book time with somebody. Uh, we use Calendly for that. Uh, if somebody wanted to, they could put that in their work instant messenger field. Um, and that would appear in their email signature as well. So that was uh, the first challenge is just figuring out which attribute we would use. And then formatting was also a little bit of a challenge. Uh, we wanted the signature to look great. We wanted to, to be very specific about where the pronouns uh, were put into the email signature. You can see the example of that. And so the WYSIWYG editor in Flash Panel, uh, I wanted to be a little bit more precise than that. So there is a edit source code button in there. And so I basically just went in and added the signature information along with the HTML tags to format it exactly the way that I wanted so that I knew what I'd be getting. Um, and then part of that, the formatting is really important. And so it wasn't, you know, it's obviously not really up to the IT team to determine what your email signature looks like, right? We're, we're here to make that happen, but we needed to work with our people and culture team and uh, our design team to make it look right. You know, when we added the word pronouns and then the actual pronouns, it made your email signature go from like this long to this long. So we had to do a little bit of formatting magic on that one and we ended up taking out the word pronouns. So it just says what the pronouns are. But um, yeah, so those were some of the challenges. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, it was a really great opportunity because the people on culture team kind of came to us with this question of like, how do we accomplish this? Um, so it was able to sort of cement the relationship that we had with them even more. Hopefully this was helpful to all of you listening out there. Um, stay tuned for our next episodes. We'll be, we'll be talking about office build outs, offboarding workflows, security incident responses, uh, how to not kill plants apparently. Um, so stay tuned. Please leave us any comments and let us know if there's anything you'd like to hear about specifically. And don't forget to join our Slack community, better-it. Thumbs up. <laughs> Clap. <laughs> <laughs>